He's the senior pastor of Breakthrough Chapel in London, Salvation House in Accra. He's also the vice president of the Breakthrough Chapel Worldwide. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, my brother. God How bless you, you for the good job. By the grace of God, we're doing extremely well. Praise God. And how is your family? Jesus makes me well. We are all good by the grace of God. Thank you so much for coming this morning to share God's thank word you. with and, us. Uh, thank you for the great job you're doing, man of God. Thank God bless you. you. God bless you. God bless you so much. Please, we are listening. Praise the name of the living God. I just want to share with us very briefly this morning on the new book that by the special grace of God that the Lord helped me to come out with. Now, the title of this book is Charisma Plus Character. Charisma Plus Character. And um, I just want to quickly um, throw a little light on this. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name for the gift of life. We bless your name for your grace and your mercy. We thank you that your presence is here even to heal and to bless and to turn things around in Jesus' mighty name, in the favor of your people. Let the name of the living God be exalted, be elevated, and be lifted up. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Now, very quickly, I just want to share on this new book. A lot of the time, what I've seen, especially this day in the body of Christ, is that a lot of people have focused on getting charisma, but are very devoid of character. Let me say it again. A lot of people have focused on amassing charisma, but are very deficient on character. Now, it is very important in this life to understand that a life of charisma without character is a flawed life. A life of charisma without character is like a life full of kwashioko. It is a life that is more nourished. A lot of people today want anointing, but they don't want character. A lot of people today want wealth, but no character. A lot of people today want beauty, but no character. Whenever you live in life with charisma, but no character, you are bound for disaster. A life of charisma without character is like a life of a car that is descending a hill with a top speed but no brakes. What happens is that you are bound to crash. And that is what we are seeing a lot in the body of Christ, even in the body of Christ today. And it's rather unfortunate. Now, the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter number 39, Exodus chapter number 39. Now, if you read from the verse number 24, because of time, I'm going to have to summarize very quickly. The Bible talks about a story between God and Moses. When God called Moses and anointed Moses and gave him specific instructions, God said to Moses, he said to him that Moses, my servant, I want you to design a robe for for Aaron, my, my, my minister or my priest to minister in. Now, this was the beginnings of the tribe of Levi, the tribe that was supposed to set the tones of priesthood in the land of Israel. And I watched this, so God gave me specific instructions. And God said that thou will make bells of pure gold and put it between the pomegranate at the hem of the robe for which the minister must minister in. Now, it is very imperative for us to understand that, look, the robe that we are talking about here signifies the life of the believer. The robe signifies the lifestyle of the believer. Now, but what God is saying is that at the bottom, at the very foundation of that robe, I wanted to put two things. Number one, put the bells. I say that the bells here signifies charisma. Because naturally, bells are very loud. Bells make a lot of noise. In other words, because they make noise, because they are golden, they attract. That is how charisma is. Charisma will attract people to you. But your character is what will determine whether those you attract are able to stay or to get away. And that is what God said to Moses. He said, when you make that role for the minister to minister in, ensure that at the foundation of that robe, 
which is the lifestyle of the believer, you have these two things. You have the bells and you have the fruit. Now, pomegranate signifies the fruit of the spirit. Charisma signifies the giftings of the spirit. And it is very important for us to understand. If you look at the Bible very carefully, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, from the verse number 1, if the Bible talks about the fact that we must desire spiritual gifts and we must not be ignorant of these ones. It talks about reg revelational gifts. It talks about power gifts. There are so many gifts, nine solid gifts that the Bible talks about in there. The gift of prophecy, the gift of miracles, the gift of faith, the gift of discernment of spirit, the gift of tongues, and all of that. But you know, in getting of this gift, we must always balance it with character. So therefore, in the book of Galatians, chapter number 5, from the verse number 19, the Bible says, The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? And then the Bible begins to actually go and number or list or outline these ones it talks about fornication it talks about uncleanness it talks about adultery and so many of them and then when it was concluded in paul right and says that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of god but then if you look at it very carefully from the verse number 22 by said by the gift by the fruit of the spirit is love and then goes on to enumerate a number of giftings, a number of blessings, a number of fruit that love begot. So he said, but the fruit of the spirit is love. And then talks about joy. And then talks about peace. And then talks about patience, long suffering. And talks about all the other, all the other fruits that follows. And that made me to understand that a life that is full of charisma. And a life that is not blended with character, but full of charisma. Is a life that is so much devoid and deficient of the gift, sorry, of the joy, of the peace, of the love, of the fruit of the spirit. Because any time you have the principal fruit that is a fruit of love, love begats joy, joy begats peace, and so on and so forth. So you don't struggle to exude joy. I am here to announce to somebody that is listening to me this morning, under the sound of my voice, that God's perfect will concerning our lives is that you and I will have a life full of charisma, a life full of wealth, a life full of beauty, but well blended with character let me give you these examples as i prepare to close watch this very carefully here the bible talks about a number of characters and and i love it so much when i read about these characters because you know whenever you read about the lives of some of these characters it gives you a very straight pathway either to succeed or to fail let's look at the life of a man by the name of jacob jacob set out at the beginning of his life the bible says when he had married in fact he will go on to have children with actually some very powerful women there was leah in there there was rail in there and uh, the bible says he actually went on to take their mate and had children with them as well and had 12 children so the 12 that became the tribes of Israel, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, God, Naphtali, Dan, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. Twelve of them. But watch this. When it came to the life of Reuben, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter number 49, from the verse number 1 downward, that Jacob was about to die, called his sons and said, I have to bless you before I go and join my fathers. So, J so Jacob had to bless the lives of his sons. But watch this. When he calls Reuben, he said, Reuben, you are my firstborn and my might, the excellency of my power and the beginning of dignity. He said, unstable as water, thou shall not excel. Why? Because you went into my bed and defiled it. What Reuben actually did was that Reuben went into his father's bed, took his father's concubine and slept with the father's concubine on his father's bed. So watch this. So instead of Reuben receiving an eternal blessing, Reuben went on to receive an eternal curse. So today, 
we talk about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. We should have gone on to talk about the God of Reuben, but we don't talk about Reuben. Why? Because of lack of character, he forsook his eternal blessing. There are some people that are listening to me. Because of a character flaw, there is an eternal blessing that you must get, but you are forsaking it. There are people that must be enjoying the blessings of God. The anointed, yes, but because of a lack of character. The blessing that must be fully appropriated to them, that blessing has been cut off. Why? Because of the character deficiency syndrome. Let us look at the brothers of Reuben that followed, Simeon and Levi. The Bible says, when it was their time to be blessed, the father calls them and says, Simeon and Levi, because your cruelty was so bad, in your anger, you slew. In their anger, they killed. There are some people, when they get angry, it does not matter how beautiful they are. There are some very beautiful women. They marry nice men. Good marriages, but their anger cannot sustain their marriages. There are some very handsome men. When they go out of town, very lovely. But for some reason, you know what? People see them very nice, but in their homes... They turn their wives into punching bags. Why? Because their anger is cruel. He said, Simeon and Levi, your anger was so cruel. And because of the cruelty of their anger, they were not able to also access the blessing of their father. Look at the life of Samson. Samson was a man that was supposed to fight to deliver Israel. But watch this. Every battle that Samson fought, every fight that Samson entered into was actually because of a woman that Samson loved. Samson never did anything for Israel except when it concerned a woman that Samson loved. Look at it very carefully. And you realize in the book of Judges, it was there. When he had to avenge his enemies, it had to be over a woman. When he had to kill men with a jawbone of an ass, it had to be because of a woman. When he had to kill a lion, it had to be because he had to go to Timnan in order to get the woman that Samson actually loved. Today, because of the crazy appetite and passion some men have for women, they will do anything to get that woman. It is a character flaw. I am here to encourage you. Now look, you can forsake your eternal blessing because of a character flaw. Maybe you are hearing me this morning under the sound of my voice. You are a believer, yes, but there is a particular character flaw. And that thing has so much denied you of the blessings of God. Sometimes we go to church, we are crying on God, believing God for a miracle. But God knows that if I give you that miracle because of that character flaw, you cannot handle it. And because we cannot handle it, sometimes we turn around and we are blaming God. Our nation is plunged into darkness because of character flaw. Politicians will rise to get into power only to dip their hands into national coffers and begin to squander the money and the wealth of the nation. And then we turn around and you look at the lives of people lying in the hospital, common blood bank, people are suffering to get blood. Why? Because the money that is meant to go there, somebody is busily chopping that money nyafu nyafu. I am here to let you know that whatever we are doing under the surface of this earth a day is coming we shall stand before the judgment seat of god and give an account of it have you blended your life charisma with character i want to read this apostle general sam kwanjankara wrote this about this book he said many have written on the subject have, sp have spoken on the subject of charisma many have written on the subject of charisma but very little do we hear the amalgamation of the two it says it is imperative to read this book because you ignore the wise nugget of this book at the peril of a rising and staying at the top people rose to the top but to sustain their staying at the top became a problem i am here to encourage you i am here to let you know i have seen men that were so huge but fell into the abyss of 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 mediocrity into the abyss of sin into the abyss of evil into the abyss of disgrace why because of lack of character at the peak of his life let me give you three examples in modern times and i'm done at the peak of his life at the peak of his stay in office a man by the name of bill clinton almost lost the white house he, in fact he lost the white house why because of a young woman by the name of monica Lewinsky. not many years ago 
one of the finest preachers ever in the state of Atlanta, Georgia. This man, very powerful man of God, at the, ch at the church where he passed it, he had a membership of over 25,000 people. Unfortunately, by the time the man died, the number had dwindled to less than 2,000 because of scandals and because of character flaws. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to beseech you. Look, today, there are people like Jimmy Swaggart, lovely man of God. You watch him and you know that God has restored him. But some people will never want to do anything with him because of one mistake of a character flaw. Years ago, we watched the match of David Beckham and we saw how a little mistake of a character flaw caused his own country to crash out of the World Cup. Look at the life of a man by the name of Eric Cantona. Eric Cantona was playing for Manchester United against Crystal Palace in 1995. Somebody jeered at him. He got angry and he replied with a Kung Fu kind of reply. Manchester United banned him for eight months. English, English Premier League made sure that he was actually suspended. Although this thing had nothing to do with his national team, France, they also took an interest in the case and decided to ban him. So the team that went on to win France 98, Eric Cantona was, the, was supposed to be the captain of that team. But instead of Eric Cantona being the captain that lifted the glorious World Cup on home soil, in Paris in 1998, Eric Cantona was watching on his TV back at home. Why? Because of one character flaw. He forsook his eternal blessing. He forsook a blessing that was supposed to crown his career. Today, we talk about Eric Cantona, but we don't talk about a World Cup winner. We talk about people like Zidane as World Cup winners. What am I saying here? Let me say this in conclusion. Sir, even in the world... Even in the world, even in the world, even in the world, in the world of football, you cannot make certain mistakes and get away with it. Today, men of God are doing all kinds of things. Today, church members are doing all kinds of things. Today, believers are engaging in all kinds of things, and yet, we can carry on. But the day is coming when every man shall account for whatever he's doing with his life. Every woman shall account for whatever she's doing with her life. I want to encourage you that this charisma and character story, we've got to take it seriously. We've got to take it seriously to the next dimension. And I want to conclude by saying this, look, maybe you are hearing me under the sound of my voice, but you know that it is not by might nor by power. You try everything to live well, but for some reason, you cannot stop that womanizing. You try everything. You know, there are some people, they cannot help themselves. One day I saw a woman and she was busily smoking. Whether she was pregnant or something like that. But it was something so wrong. And she said, cigarette smoking is my habit. I cannot stop it. Maybe you have a habit. You cannot stop it. Let me tell you, it is not by your strength. Neither shall it be by your might. Sometimes, all you need to do is to surrender your life to Jesus. Sometimes all you need to do is to give your life back to God. Because when God steps in that situation, God has a way of taking over and making that which was impossible become possible for you one more time. You need Jesus. You realize that without God, you cannot do anything that is supernaturally inclined. Without the strength of God, you cannot fulfill the spiritual demands of life. Not long ago, we went to play a football match in the city of London. And this friend that invited me, I went, we played for the team. We won the match 4-2 to the glory of God. When we had finished the match, he took some pictures. And I said to this young man, when we finish, can you send me the pictures? After 24 hours, the pictures were not coming. So I called him and I said, my brother, can you send the pictures? When I sent the call, I did not get through. So I sent him a text. Then he replied. 
and he said, I'm in the hospital. I said, why? Is somebody not well? He said, you not know, believe it. After the game, I had a heart attack. This was somebody that we had just played a game for 90 minutes together. And there was no sign of that happening to this one. But all of a sudden, this is what I heard. And I'm here to let you know that life is full of uncertainties. Life is full of frailties. Life, you cannot determine what is going to happen the next minute. Maybe you are hearing me. You haven't given your life to Jesus. Maybe you are hearing me. You are in church. But you know that if Jesus is to come today, you cannot be sure of your inclusion on the list of people that will be raptured. I want to pray with you. Don't wait for another minute. Don't wait for another time. If that person is you, please, behind wherever medium you are hearing or watching or listening from, I want to pray this prayer with you. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. This day, as my Lord and personal Savior, forgive my sins, cleanse me from my unrighteousness, purge me from every iniquity, come and stay in my life, now and forevermore, in Jesus' name.